How's it going everyone? I want to welcome you to another episode of Dude I Love or Hate My New Ride Home Edition. Today we're going to take a look at more forbidden fruit vehicles. That's right, international vehicles, things that we don't get here in the US. And that's going to start out with a 2009 Jeep Commander that was sent in to us by a viewer named Eric from Norway. And you might be thinking, Jeep Commander, we have those in the US. And you'd be right, but we don't have them quite like this because this Jeep Commander has a three liter diesel that was built by Mercedes-Benz. So let's give it a look. This here is a 2009 Jeep Commander Limited. I do believe you had another Jeep on the show where you called it the most misunderstood Jeep of all times, but I believe this one may be the actually most misunderstood Jeep. Uh, I've had it for the past three years. Uh, this is the European spec version, meaning that um, I'm having the Mercedes-Benz diesel. It's a V6 uh, engine producing 200, no, 218 horsepower and uh, 510 Newton meters. It um, has a rating of 22 miles per gallon and uh, 0 to 60 in 9 seconds. So if I remember correctly it's better than the 4.7 V8 but uh, worse than the Hemi. It is uh, rated to tow 3.5 ton. Uh, it also then comes equipped with the uh, Quadro Drive 2 system, which means uh, it has uh, lockers on all differentials or technically limited slip. It has uh, factory skid plates, so it can take a little bit of a beating. So, in terms of upgrades I've done to it, I've um, installed a spacer based uh, lift kit. Oh, you can't see it here in the back, but we can see it here in the front. And, and also new upper control arms. Also modified due to the lift, I uh, switched to the American style uh, uh, hitch system. Also in addition to being a limited version, I believe it's quite limited indeed, because this one is actually mall rated. And if you wonder, I produced that one myself. Uh, I do some moderate off-roading, not hardcore. It's uh, <laughs> I simply don't have the money to bang it up. Go over some of the dislikes. As I said, it's a bit too expensive for me to bash it on the off-road, so I don't use it as hard on the trail as I would like to do. Um, it has had a few expensive repairs. Um, the Mercedes-Benz engine, for example, had an oil cooler failure, which was just an O-ring, but the labor was extremely expensive. I think it was uh, close to 40 hours of work. Um, in terms of the likes, I um, really like the comfort of the thing. It's uh, very comfortable on the road. The V6 diesel is uh, powerful enough when towing and especially when well, driving by myself. I've um, installed a wireless charger here. I switched over to a Android based uh, head unit and in the back I installed um, a Wi-Fi router. So, this is Eric signing off from TFL Nordic. Nice to see all your videos. Well, thanks for sending in your Jeep, Eric. And I've always thought that these Commanders were great looking trucks. You combine that with a nice, torquey little diesel engine. And like you mentioned, the fact that it has limited slip differentials, skid plates, good clearance. It's a pretty unstoppable off-roader, which makes this thing just a great all-around package. And for that, I'm gonna give it an eight out of 10. Also because I'm kind of a sucker for Jeeps. Thanks again for sending it in. Next up, let's check out this 2015 Ford Ranger that was sent in to us by a viewer named Mariano from Argentina. My name is Mariano Jara. I'm here in Argentina, South America, in Jujuy province. This is my 2015 Ford Ranger. Uh, I am well, sorry about my, my English, I will do my best. The big difference between yours and this one is the model. It's a 3.2 liter, 5 cylinder, um, 
diesel engine with the manual transmission. It doesn't have the seats, it's more like a base model. It's an XLT, uh, it's before the, the most higher trim level, the limited. Um, it is my first truck. I drive it for a long one month and I make some good fuel consumption. Uh, I, I have, I don't know, uh, 12 or 15 kilometers per liter. As you can see it has a that beautiful diesel engine sound. I will try to open this. So you can see it's five cylinder diesel engine it has some minor scarf but every way it's it's pretty good, it's in good condition. So well take care guys and stay home. I appreciate you sending in this Ford Ranger, not only because they're all around good trucks, but because it has a diesel and a six speed manual, thank God. I mean, that is just the perfect way to option a truck like this. I don't know why they don't allow us to do that here. Awesome to see one of these trucks with a manual transmission. And for that, I'm gonna give it another eight out of 10. Thanks again for sending it in. Lastly, we have a very cool small off-roader. It's a 2004 Suzuki Jimny that was sent in to us by a viewer named Alistair from Scotland, and it's pretty cool, so let's give it a look. Hello TFL, big fan of yours here, coming to you from sunny Scotland. Just thought you might be interested in a quick walk around of my uh, 2004 Suzuki Jimny. Uh, I know you've already had one on the show, but I thought you might be interested in one that's a little older, crustier, and a bit modified. So uh, this is my uh, Jimny, had it for about five years now. Um, it's a 2004 model, which is sort of a sweet spot for these. It's the last year that they came with an old fashioned manual transfer case shifter, um, but it's before they began to run into some reliability issues with their uh, gearbox. Um, so for those who aren't familiar with this vehicle, um, it's pretty popular across most of the world, but it was never sold in North America. Um, it's tiny. Uh, weighs I think around 1200 kilos I'm not sure what that is in pounds maybe 2500 or so um, but it's a proper off-roader built on a, a body on frame um, with a part-time four-wheel drive and a low range transfer case and uh, solid axles both front and rear um, uh, and it's the the sort of descendant of the Samurai that you guys did get um, now mine's modified for off-road use. Um, these are quite common to modify in the UK and probably one of the most commonly seen off-roaders at off-road sites. Mine's pretty modestly modified because I still use it as a daily driver. So it's got a two inch lift, um, bigger tires. I've gone with the General Grabber 83s, which I've, I've really liked. Not amazing in the really thick mud, but pretty good all-rounders. Um, got kind of rated recovery points, LED lights. Um, and I've got a stainless uh, exhaust system which makes it sound much more powerful than it is. These things have very small engines, 1.3 litre petrol, producing I think around 80 horsepower. Um, so it's, it's, it's not powerful by any stretch of the imagination. Um, so I'll give you a quick walk around. Um, so manual locking hubs at the front here, that's a, a particular issue with these vehicles is they um, the vacuum lines that do the auto hubs are vulnerable to corrosion, so that's got replaced for reliability. These come as four seaters, um, but I removed the rear seats um, just for more storage space. Pretty small as far as sort of the overland type vehicles go, but if people can cycle to around the world, then you can fit plenty of stuff in the back of the chimney. Okay, you can see here, got the raised air intake. Uh, there's been through some pretty deep water. My next project that I need to work on is I've got some diff breathers that I've not installed yet. Um, like I said, kind of tiny vehicle. Main advantage of it is it's, it's small size and lightweight. It can get places that other vehicles can't get. It's got a wheelbase that's significantly shorter than a two-door Wrangler, uh, which is probably be the closest equivalent in the States. Um, but more significant than that, it's got a, a, a very, very narrow wheel track as well. So 
you can get into all sorts of tight spots you couldn't fit with anything else. Uh, so that's that's a huge advantage. Um, although it does lend it to kind of being a little bit bit wobbly if you end up at too much of an angle. Main disadvantage to these is just due to their size. Obviously, the, the, even with bigger tires on, the the overall ground clearance still isn't fantastic. So you can get stuck in Land Rover ruts quite badly. But um, it's got, as you can see, kind of fantastic approach, departure, and uh, ramp breakover angles. Anyway, sorry for wasting on. Hope uh, hope you've enjoyed that little video, um, and let me know what you think. Cheers. Well, what I think is that this is awesome because it's a small off-roader, and that's really something that we don't see so much in the US anymore, at least not in the old school sense of a small off-roader because vehicles have just gotten bigger and bigger here. And what's so great about a small off-roader is that they're light, they're nimble, you can drive them through small gaps in the trees, they fit anywhere, and it's kind of hard to get them stuck because they don't dig themselves so deep into the ground. So they're a ton of fun to drive. And for that, I'm gonna give it a 10 out of 10 because I just love small off-roaders. Thanks again for sending it in. And if any of you out there have other cool international vehicles that we don't get here in the US, send them to us because we would love to see them. And here's Tommy to show you exactly how you can do that. Hey. Thank you for sending us your video here to TFL Studio so we can make it famous on Dude I Love My Ride Home Edition. Well, we noticed that a lot of people had some issues sending us files because emails are just not suitable for video. However, we do have a much better solution. It's a file service called WeTransfer, and WeTransfer is a way you can securely and safely and freely, we should say, send us your video files. That way the quality is better and there's no issues going down the road. So here's how you do it. If you're planning on using your cell phone to upload the files, like I think many of you will be, all you have to do is open up your browser, and this works both on Apple and Android, and type in tflstudios.wetransfer.com, and then hit enter. Now it will take you to this page, and you'll see a big button that says send a file. Click that, and then tap I agree, and it'll give you a plus arrow where you can actually add your files add up to 20 gigabytes. So click that. I'm going to say photo library, videos, and then I'm going to select my video and hit done. So there you can see your video is added. In the message section, please add your name and your truck. So in this case, it'll be Tommy Micah and the truck or car or whatever lawnmower is 2020 Nissan Titan, just so we know what's coming our way. And then click next. And then you plug in your own personal email. And what it'll do is send you a verification just to make sure you're a real person and not a robot and click transfer. So it says verify your email. Go ahead and check your email and you'll see a code. And then go ahead and plug in your verification code. All right, and verify. So once you're verified, you'll see it will upload your file to the internet and you can see it going there. And then, and then it will send a verification that you have completed your transfer and that we have received it. Now you can actually do the same exact process on a computer, it's just as easy. Let me show you. Here on the computer, it's the same exact process. So simply type in tflstudios.wetransfer.com and hit enter. And then here you'll see a little bubble that says add your files. So click on the file you want to add, then plug in your email address, your personal email address, and a message. Once again, your name and your vehicle. So it'll ask you to verify your email again, and then you'll be ready to go. Uh, and we'll get your files a little bit quicker, it'll be a little bit easier. Well, thank you so much for contributing, and if you have any questions, email me, ask at tfltruck.com, and we'll help you through them. While vehicles like these might not be especially exciting to some of our international viewers, they're really interesting to us because they're not like the vehicles that we usually see around here and they're different in ways that we can appreciate like the fact that a lot of these have diesel engines, manual transmissions, those are all good things and so we appreciate you guys sending them to us. But that's all for this video. As always, this is Case with the Fast Lane Car. Be sure to go back to TFL Truck, TFL Car, and TFL Off-Road for more news, views, and real-world reviews. Thanks everyone for watching, and stay safe.